How's it going guys and welcome back. So once you reach chapter 2 of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, here is where the game really starts to open up and there are so many different things to do. So I put together this short list of things you want to make sure you get done before you head off to the next chapter. First of all, make sure you have picked up the three weapons available in chapter 2 in the Grasslands, which are going to be the Sleek Saber for Cloud, which can be found down here at the abandoned dock. You can get this literally as soon as you leave Calm. You want to simply head south. When you get to the abandoned docks, it's actually kind of hard to miss. You'll see this purple chest, pick it up, that's going to be Cloud's new weapon. The second weapon in this chapter is going to be Aerith's Timeless Rod, which can be found just inside Bill's Ranch. You want to go inside the main red big building, and just to the right of Chloe's counter, you can find another purple chest. Inside this chest is going to be the Timeless Rod. The third and final weapon you can get in chapter number two is going to be the High Caliber Rifle for Barrett. For this one, you will need to advance the story until you unlock the Chocobo. Once you have access to riding Chocobos, you want to go back to the abandoned docks where you got the weapon for Cloud, and then just continue going through the swamp to the south until you get to this location right here. And on this small little island in the swamp, you'll see another purple chest, which is going to contain Barrett's weapon. The next thing you want to make sure you're doing ASAP is going to be creating autocast materia. You can do this as soon as you unlock Chadley, which happens automatically during the main story. Just after unlocking the first activation intel tower, you'll have access to the menu called develop materia when you talk to Chadley. Here we can create four different materia, however by far the best one is going to be the autocast materia. The reason autocast is so important in this game is because if any of your characters that you're not controlling have any spell materia equipped, they won't automatically use any of that magic unless you manually control them or have to actually command them to use it unless they have an auto cast materia in a dual slot with that spell. So this is essential especially for your healer. So for example if you use an Aerith as your healer you want to make sure you've got a healing materia connected linked together with an auto cast in a dual slot. Timeless rod weapon we just picked up for Aerith in this video is actually really useful as it does have a dual slot available. So make sure you're developing at least one if not even two or three auto cast materia. If you need more intel points simply do any of the random intel around the map. Now that we mentioned Chadley, you also want to make sure that you unlock the Titan Summon Materia as soon as possible. You do this by completing his first combat simulation. Now Titan can be a pretty tough opponent if you're low level, however by completing the three Divine Intel in the Grasslands, which are located just here, the second one is down here, and the third one over here, each time we do these, we actually weaken a Titan, and if you do the Divine Intels first and then come to the battle simulation, you get the option to fight a weakened Titan and still get the Summon as a reward if you defeat him. So if you are having trouble with this, make sure you do the Divine Intels first and then come back. There is also a hidden classified intel that allows you to have a mini boss fight, let's call it, against the Quetzalcoat. I'm not sure exactly how this is pronounced, I've been struggling with this word ever since Final Fantasy VIII and I've dreaded it, so let's just call it the Lightning Dragon for now. The way to unlock this classified intel right here is first we need to do the Expedition Intels. These are the Life Springs, they're really simple, all you need to do is walk up to them and then press the triangle button as soon as the circle closes in. They're really, really simple to unlock and just by doing the Activation Intel Towers, you actually unlock the location of all of the expedition, the life springs on the map anyway. I believe you only need to do four of the expedition intel life springs for this boss battle to appear. But if it doesn't appear, just do all six. They're really straightforward. They're really easy. They show up on the map. And then we can fight this really cool boss, which is pretty good for even farming XP early on in the game. It is weak to ice attacks. So if you're having a tough time, simply use Shiva and all of the ice attacks. Get them into pressure really quick then stagger, and then just rinse and repeat. Also, quick side note, not necessarily just for this chapter, but for pretty much every chapter, make sure that you're assessing all of the enemies that you encounter in like the side quest and stuff like that, as some of the combat simulations require you to assess a certain amount of different enemies, and some of these enemies are only available in the side quest for now, unless you advance later on in the game, so make sure you are assessing pretty much any new enemy you come across at all times. There are three really good legendary cards you can get in this chapter for the Queen's Blood minigame. For all three of these, the first thing you need to do is complete the side quest, called a rare card lost. This side quest becomes available after you unlock the chocobo in the main story, so it's really early on. Then if you go and speak to the bartender back in Calm, and he will send you on a side quest where you need to defeat three different opponents at the card minigame. Once you defeat all three opponents and finish this side quest, you'll get the Chocobo and Moogle card, which is a legendary. And also by completing this side quest, you'll unlock the Thorin's card shop, which we went to to actually defeat the final opponent for the side quest. And this card shop actually sells us the Fat Chocobo and the Titan cards. All three of these cards are legendaries and they're definitely worth picking up before you advance. 
make sure you're also unlocking all of the chocobo stops. It's really quickly. All you need to do is literally lift up the signpost next to them. There's only eight of them in the entire grasslands, so it doesn't take too much time. Plus, you have extra fast travel points to go to if you ever need them. The main reason for this is every time we unlock a chocobo stop, we'll be given golden plumes. Now, these are useful for buying the accessory and armor pieces for the chocobo, which aren't going to be much use right now, but later on, you're going to need a bunch of these to make your chocobo better off for the races. You also might want to take a look at the Moogle shop, the Moogle Emporium, I believe it's called. This shop unlocks after you complete the Moogle Intel, where you've got to like round them all up into the pen at the center. And in this shop, they actually sell a few good items, mainly the two items for Cloud and Tifa that gives you 10 free SP for each of them. However, they do require Moogle medals to buy. Moogle medals can be obtained quite easily by just breaking any of the boxes you see here with these red markings on them. These boxes constantly respawn over and over again in the cache locations, which are these sort of locations that show up as little treasure chests on the map. They'll spawn all around these, and also they usually spawn on top of the activation Intel towers. So if you climb to the top of any of the towers, most likely there's going to be boxes up there so you can fast travel between the cache locations and the activation towers and you should get a bunch of moogle medals in no time also last but not least before you do leave the grasslands in chapter two make sure that you are doing the phenomenon intels you have to do these in order so first of all you have to do one here at the top right then down here the second one the third one over here to the left and then finally you get access to the fourth one where you have to go through this gate right here i'm going to try to avoid spoilers here as much as possible so i'm not going to explain why you should do these but make sure you do complete all of the phenomenon intels in all of the areas that you visit but anyway with that said i hope you did find this very helpful guys i hope you are enjoying final fantasy 7 rebirth and we'll see you next time